just got done our first portage of our last trip of the season it's early november we're going to be here for the next three days traveling not super long days we're in the shoulder seasons we're super lucky because the weather is going to be on our side and the low teens and at, at some point it might even be in the high teens but we're going to be soaking in this last trip of the year making some good memories and traveling into a different part of algonquin that i've actually never had the opportunity to explore yet so i'm very excited algonquin park is an absolute gem for all canoe campers out there the water's super cold again gloves helps quite a bit when it comes down to planning a canoe camping trip in november a few things come to mind immediately first off short days your traveling window is extremely narrow in November. Second, it's going to be cold. You have to be ready to at least be able to deal with minus 10 degrees Celsius and count yourself lucky if it's plus five. And lastly, precipitation is almost certain. We're talking cold rain during the daytime in the evening and wet, soggy snow overnight and in the morning. But somehow, Mother Nature had a completely different plan for us that weekend. Bye, see you later. We're doing this uh, 1.6 kilometer portage here. So the one and a half portage method is a really good portage met method if you're not on your own where you basically bring all of the bags halfway then one person keeps going to the end while the other person go get, goes and gets the canoe back at shore and comes back with the canoe and will go all the way back to the end and then the other person once they hit the, the end of the portage they'll come back to the halfway point grab the bag that I just dropped and bring it back to the end so it avoids having to do a full double carry and it really saves your back and your energy check this out right here this is the kind of scenery you would never see in the summertime because all of this will be filled with leaves and because you know we're in the late fall early November one of the beautiful thing about going out on a portaging trip or in the bush in general is that you get to see the, you get to see the forest naked basically and you really get to see different features that you would never see otherwise and this is just like a hidden gem in my opinion just a beautiful cliffside with all the bare trees around and a big rock at the back it's just absolutely gorgeous what's my most memorable memory my trip on the layered river and the, and the great Canadian north one of the details was you know how are we gonna get there um, well we take a car <laughs> four days away long days 16 hour days at least what a road trip <laughs> a lot of things went wrong really quickly the first night in the bush we climb up a ravine to get to get to flatland and we install our stuff and there's bugs the sound of a highway but bugs so the constant buzz i think it's on the third day one of the site that we found is is the most epic one i've seen in the middle of the light river on a sand island with the river with the forest with the rockies and with the sun that just kind of bounce on the top of the rockies sitting on not a chair because we don't have chairs but we dig in the dune oh yeah so we have per like the, the our our own personal chair i mean it's midnight you're around the fire with your sunglasses on and the sun just doesn't set so it lasts for hours no idea where we are on the river because I kind of forget all the battery packs in the car before before we hit the river. And no hard copy of a map. But at that point in time, that was not in my head at all. It was 
in the moment. That trip was was absolutely exceptional because of the people. Because I've seen stuff that I've never seen before. I mean, 20 minutes in, and you got like 20 bison in front of you on an island. Here we are paddling to the end of our first lake of the day and we can hear some rapids at the end and uh, Alain in a small little boat he's like he's thinking to himself hey I think I could probably run this what do you guys think so I check out Gaia apps and I'm like man I think this is a fall he's like oh yeah it's like yeah it looks like it's a it's written as a fall here I don't think it's a rapid check this out Check out how the fall is carved into the rocks here. It's very own channel. This is a beautiful, beautiful fight. Wow. You know, the only downside to this trip is that I will forever be chasing the perfect November weekend again. November is by far the worst month of the year to get through because of the days that are getting shorter and shorter, the time change, the temperature drastically changing. It seems like it's raining all the time and the wet snow comes and goes. But honestly, after last weekend, November doesn't feel so bad.
I often get asked why I do what I do. Why this obsession with exploring the backcountry? I think there are multiple layers to answering this question. I mean, had I been able to predict the outcome of this trip, it wouldn't have been hard to convince anyone to come along. We explored epic landscape. We had clear skies day and night, and we were blessed with some of the most epic sunset and sunrise I've ever had the opportunity to see because in November, the sun is quite low on the horizon, making the colors in the sky some of the best show you'll ever get to see in the backcountry. If we add another layer to this answer and we look back at all the times I was rained out, I was cold, I was eaten alive by bugs, I had to endure some of the hardest and most difficult physical challenges of my life on these trips, these are actually the moments I remember the most because these picture perfect moments are really just a blip in time on a canoe camping trip. You only really realize this when you're back at home after you're done your trip in the comfort of your house, sitting in your living room, reminiscing about all these moments and these memories with your friends, with your family, and you who spend so much time telling the stories of all the hiccups and the hardships and the adversities you had to face during that trip. And that's when you realize that it really is all about the stories. What'd you do, man? <laughs> One, two, three. So next time you're out, be mindful of that and take the time to write your own stories. <laughs>